So and, I, and M&A. I want to talk about that because at that time, I mean, you have the background chemical engineering, you've been creating, you've been inventing. What is that like now? Because at the time, if I read it correctly, you're the, you're the guy that's focusing solely on technology because you, you can see it. This is going to be the thing that changes the future. So you're seeing Apple and you're seeing Microsoft and you're seeing eBay and Yahoo, all these things before they started. What was that like trying to explain to the investment, the banking side, like, hey, guys, this is my expertise. You guys should trust me on this. This well, is going to be the thing. So that's interesting. So when I started, uh, you know, I, I was in New York and I had every, I've had I had baby food businesses, I had paper companies, all these sort of things. And it's the dawning of introducing technology into the industrial environment. Okay, so you guys, you know, back in the day, and let's we, let's unpack this. This is actually pretty interesting. Yeah. Back in the day when I was at Goodyear or Kraft, um, very few companies then were actually, you know, in, well, they wanted to, but they didn't necessarily have the investment resources to implement computing capacity into the environment. So you guys, you guys are digital natives, <laughs> yes. okay? My generation are digital immigrants. And so at the time, if you wanted to use the computer, it was like $1,000 for a half hour of computer use. You didn't have to sign up for it. And you could go use it. And there'd be somebody standing behind you waiting for your 30 minutes to come up. And then they'd come on and you'd have to go sign up again to use the computer because it was that scarce mm. of a resource. And so one of my early projects, for instance, I was working uh, and, and running a plant uh, in, 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 you know, Niagara Falls, New York. And I was responsible for implementing some computer systems and computer control systems. So the way systems work before that were analog and they were individual. So what would happen is, you know, you're going to run a process and you're going to charge the reactor with, you know, the, with the reagents, with the catalyst, and you kind of, you know, put the steam on and stir it. And then the reaction would kind of take off, right? And depending upon the rates of change and all that, you sometimes need to cool it or heat it up. So there'd be what I call, there would be an, you know, a, an episodic observation of the event. And then you'd have an episodic, you know, intervention. So you change something and it would change the control dynamic. And like I say, if you weren't, if the controller operator wasn't at lunch or, you know, talking about football or whatever it is, every dynamic was different because it wasn't consistent because you had that human engagement as the actual control system. Well, if you put a computer system in, it's measuring those observations thousands of times a second. Mm -hmm. And you could also then put in systems of control where you could have interventions thousands of times a second. So you went from control dynamics that looked like this to control dynamics that looked like this. And for you mathematicians, everything under the curve is waste, right? So now you look at that and like, so in first implementation I did of that at the plant, increase the productivity of that plant by 26%. Okay, that's a whole shift a day by putting a control system. So now you understand the power and the productivity that software actually brings to a plant. Now take that and put it in an office, managing an insurance claim. Okay, you're an insurance adjuster. You know, my, my car is wrecked. Back in the day, you'd have to go to a place and they kind of take pictures of it, write it up, put it in an envelope, send it to somebody in the home office. And maybe you were on vacation, sit on that desk for a week, maybe got to the right person. And you said, oh, well, you know, you didn't do something right. So you got to send it back to you and get, ask some more questions. And that happened back and forth. And from that, you'd adjust it and say, okay, here's, Here's how much the you know approximate value is. You send me a check. I get mad because it wasn't enough to fix the car. And that was a whole process how things. Now, introduce a computer in that environment where through the adjustment process, in some respects, you have an adjuster who's actually looking at it and filling it out. But now you can actually take your phone and take a picture of it and based on the, you know, the make of the car, estimate exactly how many hours it's going to take, what's the bill of materials, what's the cost. And so the efficiency from an insurance product went like this to now to that, okay? That hit every single industry. That's what we're doing right now. Mm. So software is now the most productive tool introduced in our business environment in the last 50 years and likely will be for the next 50. So now I go to Goldman Sachs. 
they're now in the process of, you know, we're, we're using different spreadsheet programs. You guys don't remember because you've used Excel all your life, haven't you? You've been paying Microsoft <laughs> 30 years for a project, for a product that you use. Back in the day, there were five or six others. There was one called Lotus, there was Multiplan, there was Visical, the Asterix, a bunch of different. And so there was always a fight as to which one of these programs you would use. But once you consolidate it on one, the efficiency of not having to move, you know, my project, which I did in Lotus, to yours, which did in Excel, because we're working on a team together, that's another efficiency that came out of the system by consolidating. So I'm now at Goldman. I'm now working on a bunch of different M&A deals and started to see what I'll call the recognition of efficiency that can come from consolidation on platforms. One of which we would compare these, put these things together called common stock comparisons, where you'd get up in the morning and you'd have to put together 45 different stock comparisons for work that you're doing. And you're sitting across the aisle working on, or, you know, down the hall, working on something similar, and you're doing the exact same work he's doing. You just don't know that you're doing it. And you're both, you see all the inefficiency, whereas now once you have done that, how do I share it with you? And how do you, you know, you can do this part and do that part. It makes it much more efficient. Well, computer systems do that. So now we're getting more efficient in how we're processing deals and applications in all industries. And so now it's the dawning of what is, technology being mainstay stay in real. So the head of our department calls and he's like, I think I want to start a tech group. He's like, would you like to be part of that? I said, yeah. So where is it? We're going to do this in California. He wanted to do it in LA. I said, no, let's do it in San Francisco. He lived in LA. Mm. And I'm like, well, San Francisco's kind of, you know, Silicon Valley, all that sort of stuff. I said, well, that's where we got to go. So we agreed, and I was our first M&A banker on the ground focused on technology for Goldman Sachs in San Francisco, okay? And so from there, I advised, you know, like I say, build companies like Apple Computer and Texas Instruments and Hewlett Packard and eBay and Yahoo. And what was amazing to me, because again, it's a dawning of an industry, is how they all did things differently. In the world of a chemical engineer, if you went into almost any production facility where they're, you know, an ortho cracker where they're, they're taking oil and making different types of fuel and gas, they're all pretty much the same because over years they figured out what's the most efficient way to do it. But that's not how the software industry was. Everybody did it differently. Their go to market, their product development, okay, because it was new. And so, the whole idea ultimately behind Vista is how do I take the best practices from software companies that I have experience with and deliver those to other software companies so that the efficiency now comes out of that system and eliminate all that waste, right? That's what Vista is. It's a system. It's an engineered system. So my going out to Silicon Valley, like all things in life, you got to look at what informs you and what creates the basis for the activities or the actions you now bring forward into your work product. And that's what it is. is how do you bring engineering efficiency to the management and operations of software companies? So that's the narrative. And that's what my actions have been against from a Vista perspective.